What's up, guys? So today we're going to be talking about the New York Knicks 2020-2021 offseason. So I'm just going to get right into it. So the Knicks acquired by trade Omari Smel- Spellman by, from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Jacob Evans from Minnesota as well. Obi Toppin was drafted 8th overall. And Emmanuel Quickly was drafted 25th overall. They signed Alec Burks, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Nerlens Noel, Miles Powell, and Austin Rivers. And then leaving us in free agency is Taj Gibson, Dwayne Ellington, Kenny Wooden, uh, Kadeem Allen, Damian Dotson, Maurice Harkless, Bobby Portis, and Alonzo Trier. So our roster right now is RJ Barrett, Ignis Berzat, I don't know, Berzatis, I actually like that guy, but I don't know how to say his name, Reggie Bullock, Alec Burks, Jacob Evans, Tyler Hall, Jared Harper, Michael K. Gilchrist, Kevin Knox, Nerlens Noel, Frank Nilakina, Alfred Payton, Theo Pinson, Miles Powell, Emmanuel Quickly, Julius Randle, Austin Rivers, Mitchell Robinson, Dennis Smith Jr., Omari Spellman, and Obi Toppin. So let's get into the like some impact players. I, I would look I want to talk about some of their trades. Omari Spellman, I guess, is I, I just I don't know what to say about him. There's not much to say. He's not a great center. He, every everywhere I've seen him, he hasn't been great. And we have a lot of centers already, so I don't see him getting a lot of playing time. I don't know much about Jacob Evans either. So uh, let's go to Obi Toppin. He was drafted eighth overall by us. Um, he was one of the older players in the draft, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. People can see that as he. Uh, obviously can't like you're, he's a finished product but he could be more refined than most rookies come in so he actually is pretty high on the rookie of the year uh ladder right now so i think he's gonna be good I've, his game has been compared to uh Mari stoudemire a lot but his questions are on the defensive end which i think is a good thing because our coach tom thibodeau is a very good defensive coach so he should be able to put him on the right path as far as uh like team effort, like effort team defense being in the right place at the right time because he's a big dude and he's athletic and fast so it's like it's obviously nothing it's not like trey young where he just is a small guy and can't defend people it's like he has the physical tools it's just mentally so i think obi toppin will be a good pick for us emmanuel quickly uh yeah so if you didn't know the knicks new president is leon rose and he worked He's in connection with uh, John Calipari of the Kentucky Wildcats, so we've been labeled Kentucky of the East recently, uh, and you could see it in our picks, our draft picks, and our free agency signings. So yeah, we do have a lot of uh, Kentucky guys, and Manuel Quickly is part of that. Uh, he's a very good shooter, shot 40% from three, and he's very good at catch and shoot, running around. Like That's why I think this is actually a good pick for us. He's a point guard who's not very good at handling the ball and not a great like playmaker but he's a really good shooter kind of gives me uh shake milton vibes and for him i think this could be good because he could play off ball and just kind of work as like a like what wayne ellington did for us kind of last year like how a jj reddick operates just have him run around and shoot threes because if you can get the guy open threes he's going to make them so i think he could actually impact winning pretty quickly uh, maybe not defensively, but we're not looking to actually win a lot of games. I just think he'll be a fun player early. Um, so yeah, some signings. Alec Burks, uh, not much. Just kind of a basic two guard. He can shoot, kind of create. Nothing special. Michael could go. Chris, another one. Just uh, not a great shooter. He has some upside, I think. He could be in the right situation, used as like a small ball five, because he really is good on defense and he's has a good high, like size. It's just his shooting hurts you, and he's not big enough to traditionally play the five, so you don't really play him at four because you need shooting at the four. So maybe like a small ball five, but I don't really see much coming out of Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Nerland Snowell, another Kentucky guy. Uh, he's a little better. He can shoot a little bit, has some rim uh protecting ability uh just i think he's actually like a good starting center like i think the more he gets like the better he gets defensively i'm uh, sorry the more like the farther along his career has gone he's gotten better defensively and i think that's his calling card like i could see him being a good winning center on like a good team where he's like the like the um 
Aaron Baines of the team. Maybe not that, but just like the center that kind of does all the things you need him to do and nothing more. And yeah, Austin Rivers also we signed. He, uh, I like Austin Rivers. I don't know how much he's going to help this team because I just don't really. The th- problem with like Alec Burks and Austin Rivers is like I don't really want to give them that many minutes because we have so many young guys that I'd rather develop instead of giving them minutes. So it's tough to really be excited about a guy like that. Um, so yeah, then we also have RJ Barrett who had a tough rookie year. I think it was a combination of him uh, needing to develop. Uh, is more of a game outside of just driving to the rim. He's very tunnel vision when he gets like that, and he's just kind of a put my head down and get to the rim kind of guy, which is fine. And at six seven six six, he can do that pretty effectively. And there were some games where he had like big nights, but overall, he needs to become a better shooter, just more crafty. He just seemed very limited in his offensive game his rookie year, and I think with putting more shooting around him, it could help him a lot. Uh, is there any more anyone else to talk about on this team? Mitchell Robinson, he's a good uh, defensive big. There's been praise about him, but the problem is there's two like two problems. One is his fault. He get he fouls a lot, a lot like Jaron Jackson Jr. He averaged like three fouls this year on like 20 minutes a game. Like it was bad. And the other problem is we don't play him. I think it's partly because of the foul thing, but it's just inconsistent. Like the last year we were starting. Taj Gibson over him and it's just why are we starting this, this, I just, it's insane that we're starting a 30 whatever like 36 year old center over a 20 year old center who's showing this much promise like it's just insane to me uh, that that's what we, this team is doing I hopefully Thibodeau comes in I mean Thibodeau likes that's the thing Thibodeau is a veteran coach like he always had problems playing younger guys so I don't think that's going to change really uh so yeah mitchell but he is good defensively so i think Tivita will like him in that sense so we'll see i think mitchell's really good i think he might be one of those players where we don't really see how good he is until he gets traded because he's so good at shot blocking rim protecting scoring around the rim he's huge and athletic he can jump out of the gym like just if that guy can get in a situation that highlights his strengths and they can like he can stop fouling as much i think he could be a really really good player uh and then Julius Randle, another guy, good scoring on the block, not much else. Terrible three-point shooter, not a great mid-range shooter, not a great defender. Pretty good passer out of the post. I don't really like him that much. I saw in the preseason game I watched yesterday for the Knicks, they started Julius Randle and Obi Toppin at the 4-5. I don't think we should do that because defensively we'd suck, but uh, offensively that's pretty interesting because Obi can spread the floor and just having two guys who are pretty skilled down there. But, yeah, I don't really see the – upside of Julius Randle in this league if I'm being honest he's one of them I'm like very off on that player he just doesn't help winning in the slightest bit and he's never been part of a winning team his entire career so just not very high on Julius Randle um some other people Frank Nilekina uh Kevin O'Connor's baby he uh, still good defensively actually a really good defensive guard and that could be a calling card for Tibbs but I just don't see him being that great of a player um his offensive game is just very limited and he hasn't shown any improvement on that end uh kevin knox another guy just a young player um yeah there's not much about this team that's exciting right now uh we i'm really just hoping for like i was excited about the offseason not in the sense where we got people to be excited about but in the sense that we didn't sign anyone that i was upset about i've been a knicks fan my entire life And they have been one of the hardest franchises to watch. Like, I could, the only moment I can hang my hat on as a Knicks fan is beating the Celtics in 2013 and then losing to the Pacers in six games in the second round. That's the best memory I have of the New York Knicks. And it's been tough. And it's just year after year we make these decisions that just are mind boggling. And this year, we didn't add anyone, add any impact players, but we didn't sign anyone that i was upset about like we didn't sign julius randall like last year or just give away all our cap space to pay our 10th man even though we're gonna win 20 games so you know we uh we we're a shitty team and we signed shitty players and we're gonna keep being shitty but maybe we'll be a little less shitty than last year see ya